Let me show you around. That's my lab table, and this is my work stool. And over there is my intergalactic spaceship. And here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. Whoa, a real live spaceship! I designed it myself. Let me show you some of the different lengths of wire I used. What's going on, arcade nerds? I got my third generation uh, Fred Kona Posca um, deflection board and high voltage board. This is a kit that you, you can buy. Now, the, the, they currently are already sold out, but they're on uh, Vectrex XY and Vector Monitors, the technical side, on Facebook. Now, I got my kit early. And uh, one of the reasons I got mine early, all you guys are going to get yours soon, but the reason I got mine early is so I can do a video like this to explain to you guys how to set this up yourself. Thank you, Fred, by the way. Um, now, <clears throat> there are several applications that, you know, uh, you vector collectors might, might wish that you had a Amplophone um, uh, Atari monitor. Well, guess what? This is a clone of the Amplophone monitor, uh, but it's actually better. It's actually better. I mean, it, it's using modern technology to replace the old stuff. Look how small that is compared to the the old Amplophone. Now, I don't know what er, all the things that are that are going to come in the kit. I just have the bare minimum here, and uh, I believe you're, you're going to get connections and stuff like that. I'm going to go the, the lazy man's way. I'm not even going to bother using these connectors. I'm going to solder directly to the board. Uh, but uh, that, that's on you. When you, when, you get, when you get Fred's kit, you're going to have uh, little connectors. and you, You're going to want to pin the connectors and things like that. Now, real quick, I want to talk about some of the modifications, some of the improvements done to this that, that, are, that is different than the old version, Revision 2. First off, this is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite thing that he's done. First off, he went with a larger flyback transformer. Uh, well, in this case, for a vector monitor, it's technically not called a flyback transformer. But just so you guys know what I'm talking about, it's the, there's your flyback transformer. This is larger than, than, than the Revision 2 and Revision 1. Now, Revision 2 and, Re and Revision 1, I believe, were the exact same high voltage board. But, in my opinion, I think the flyback was undersized. Uh, I, I believe it, it saturated a little too early. Now it, it would be great for 19s, 19 inch tubes, but anything over 19, it might be pushing it. I believe this can run a larger tube with more ease. Okay, uh, so the biggest thing, my favorite thing that was done was the larger flyback, okay? Now this has been done in revision one, two, and three, but uh, originally the Amplifone monitor used for its driving driving transistors it used 2N3792s and 2N3796 and uh, 2N3716 I should say um, transistors well Fred replaced those with uh, TIP35 and TIP36 transistors here and here and he also replaced the old MPSU style transistors with TIP31 and TIP32 I believe so your your, your pre-drivers and your drivers are more beefier than an amplifone. Now, um, one thing that he did, which is cool, is if you can see that here, he added an additional pin right here. See that little pin? Now you can use that if you decide to go with the amplifone high voltage. Um, if you can, you can run this deflection with the high with the amplifone uh, high voltage board, and now you actually have your, extra, your additional pin for the additional voltage needed. Now you didn't have to have that but because you could have tapped in over here but it makes things a lot more convenient uh, you know, for, you, for you to do it. Uh, what else? What else is different on this? Oh, another, another thing. He put a larger heat sink. Um, this wasn't even necessary but it's a good thing that he did. This, this, uh, this um, deflection board does not have heat issues. It really doesn't, but he put a larger heat sink on here, which will uh, which will remove more heat, and keeping your components cool will make them last even longer than before. So that's that's really cool. Okay, so I'm 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 not going to go 
deep into detail. I want to keep this simple. I want you guys to know how to do it yourself. You don't have to know how it works to connect it all together. Okay. So this is what comes. This is what comes in the kit. I think there's going to be extra additional mounting hardware with the actual released kit, but it's going to be extra. There's going to be extra hardware to maybe nylon bushings or something like that. And there's going to be wires and connectors and things that'll make your life easier. But these these are the three major components that come in the kit. Your deflection board, your positor board, or your degauss board, and your high voltage board. And <clears throat> there's a few things you're going to have to source on your own. First off, I don't know if they come in a kit or not, but with me, I'm going to have to use various lengths of wire. And I don't know if this comes in the kit or not, but you're going to need a Molex connector that plugs into an Atari. And you're going to need a uh, connector for your uh, tube. Now this can be found on just about any TV set. Okay? And so what I did is I desoldered it from the neck board from an old TV set. Okay? So let me uh, pull out a piece of paper here. Let me explain the pinout on that connector. So hold on, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Now let me zoom in here. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit like this. I like it. Now, this little diagram I made is this is this connector turned around backwards. Okay? And I labeled all these pins and what they do. Okay? So, hmm, I lost my pencil. Let me go find a pencil. <laughs> <clears throat> well, my pencil's still lost, but I have a marker, so let's go with that. Now, you're going to have a focus pin, and your focus pin is going to connect to the thicker, the white wire on your high voltage. What you want to do is, you want to pry this piece of plastic off. There's usually a piece of plastic right here on these, on these uh, sockets. Pry that off and solder your wire right here for the white wire for your focus, okay? Now, there is a spark gap. You're going to want to you're going to want to ground the spark gap. This isn't necessary, but it's a safety um, it, it's I suggest doing it, but you don't have to. Let's say it that way, okay? Now, one of these pins, both of these pins are heater. Pick one pin. I don't care which one, doesn't matter, okay? Pick one pin and ground it to the spark gap. And then connect this to ground. Now, when I say ground, I'm talking about is this connector right here. It literally says GND, ground. Okay? Now, this connector also says heater. B, G, and R. All B, G, and R is is red, green, and blue. Okay, so this connector is going to connect to blue, red, and green. These all go into that connector. Okay, and um, oh, you're going to have G2. Now also keep in mind that connector also says heater. So heater and you have one more. It's G2. Now G2 is the smaller red wire that comes from the flyback. So G2 and focus now remember, focus is the white wire, and G2 is the red wire, and those are going to connect to your flyback. <laughs> it's a terrible picture, but okay. So 
That is how you connect that. And I'm going to go into more depth on this. I'm just going through it real quick, okay? Okay, now keep in mind, we're just going over this. I'm going to go into more detail, but here's another thing that we need to look at. <clears throat> this is the connector that goes to uh, an Atari vector, okay? Now, when I say connector, I'm talking about... See if I can find it here. I'm talking about this plug right here, okay? Now, on this plug, um, do you see the flat area here, the flat area here, and the flat area in the center? This plug will have the same markings. Flat, flat, center. Now, your Atari harness will plug into this plug, okay? Now, I labeled these red, green, blue. And so now we know that these wires going to these parts are red, green, blue. Ground, ground, ground. X, Y. I chose not to bother with these. And this is AC, center tap, AC. Now this goes to, uh, now th these are available wires coming from the Atari harness. And now they're labeled so you can wire them into the board. And we'll get, we'll get back to that on how to wire it into the board. Now, I'm going to go into this. <clears throat> this is, see, on this board, this is the board that Fred made, it has a 15-pin VGA connector, just like that, okay? This is the pinout of that 15-pin. And <clears throat> once you get the, you, you're going to get this connector in the kit, okay? And as you can see, there are pins on the connector and you're gonna to want to solder onto these pins and these are the order that you would solder into it red green blue X Y and ground I chose just to use this ground but there are other grounds on this connector okay um, I don't think it's really that necessary to ground it a million times over uh, that's just that's just my opinion um, also you're going to notice that this this board has grounding points. Well, this says test point three, but that's a ground, I believe. Hope I'm not lying to you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's a ground, okay? So you're gonna want to solder, here's a ground also down here. You're gonna want to solder a wire to this ground. And that wire needs to connect to the high voltage board, which is also labeled ground. If you want to solder a wire from here, to here and another wire from here to the DAG strap on your monitor. What's the DAG strap on the monitor? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> now on the back of a, of a CRT tube there is elect electrically conductive paint okay and this paint is your DAG, your aqua DAG and there's a strap that goes across the DAG and most tubes will have it, well they'll all, they will all have it but there's a metal tube. There's a metal, bare metal wire. You see that? And it's usually connected to a wire. Well, that needs to ground to, it needs to be, it needs to be grounded with these other boards also. So all grounds need to be shared. Let me zoom out. All grounds need to be shared on the monitor. So this needs to be grounded with this. This and, and, and these two need to be grounded to your tube. Okay. So, what else? This one I'm gonna do. Now, in your kit, you're probably going to get um, Molex connectors or whatever, something like these, okay? And with Fred's kit, let me open this bag. I've never bought a complete kit from Fred. I've always bought it, got it cheap. <laughs> and half assembled uh, so I don't know exactly what Fred's finished kit is going to look like but what I've been getting are these connectors right here and you would you would uh, crimp or solder uh, a wire into this and then this would snap into one of these connectors now you see how this connector has slots well these 
have a notch. See this little notch right there? Can you see it? Well that notch would go in and snap into that slot. Okay? And you just make sure your wires are correct and lined up with the, with the silk screen markings on the board. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go that method. I'm going to go my own method on this. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to solder wires directly to the PCB. And you know what? If I need to repair it ever, ever in the future, I will uh, just <laughs> desolder the wires and repair it. Or take it out as one entire unit. Okay, so let's get started with some soldering. Okay, so what I've done is I've gotten myself some wire and I happen to pick the colors of these wires and my colors are red, green, blue, black, and my orange is going to be my heater. You can do any, you can do all the same colors if you want. It doesn't matter what colors. This just might be easier for demonstration if I go with the colors of the wire of the colors of the guns I'm using. Does that make sense? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I also got a short little wire like this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the spark gap ground to my short piece of wire. Now I'm going to connect one of my heater lines. Let's connect it to this one. Doesn't matter which one you connect it to as long as one of the heater lines is connected. Okay? And that's not soldered yet, it's just touching that. So, what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to solder that heater line to a ground, the spark gap to a ground. Now I'm actually going to connect a ground wire to the spark gap. It would stay still. Just like that. Okay, so just in case you don't see it, this is what I'm doing. That is connected to that, which is my ground. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a red wire. And I uh, drop my green wire. Hold on. Okay. And I'm going to connect. Let me dab a little bit of solder on this. This pin right here, the very end pin, that is my red. So now I have a red wire. Okay, so red is now connected, just like that. <clears throat> now let's grab green. Okay. Oh, there's something I forgot. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, this is going here. I just just tin it a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and connect my green like so. And I forgot there's a whole other ground that needs to be connected. So, let's do that. I'm going to find a black wire like this. And if I could find my cutters. There I go. Boy, I keep dropping these wires on the ground. Okay. This pin right here, the very first pin on this side right here is a ground and I forgot to ground it. So I'm going to twist this around here. Let's solder that. I hope this helps any of you guys. Fred asked me to do this video, so <clears throat> if anyone has any questions, he could just send them to the video. 
But okay, so this is going to share the same ground as these right here. Okay, so do you see my black wires? Ground, ground, ground. Okay, so now I have, let's go back to the colors again. Red, green, and blue is the very edge pin over here. So I'm going to get a blue wire. <clears throat> I'm going to solder this right here. My plan was to make this so you could kind of follow along. And maybe maybe you could pause the video and do this along with me at home. But okay, so red, green, and blue are now connected. So we have heater. Let's connect our heater line. I'm going to tin this. Okay, so there's my heater. Now we need to worry about G2 and focus. Now with G2 and focus, you're going to want to pull out your high voltage unit. <clears throat> now G2 is going to be this red wire. Okay, I have the red wire here. I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Okay, and G2 is this pin right here. You see it? I'm poking it. So let me tin it. Let's stick our G2 in there. Uh, that's connected. Okay, so that's connected. And we have one more wire that needs to go to the high voltage unit. Now this is focus. I'm trying not to get anything scrambled up here. Focus. That's the white wire. I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Like that. Now, with these focus, with the focus line, you're going to flip the plug around and you're going to want to stick the plug, the focus wire, in through the top like this. Okay, so I'm going to hold this here and let's solder this guy. Okay, good enough. Okay, so that's now soldered on. I'm going to close this. Okay, so now focus, G2, and these are all together. So, I'm going to get all these, pull it off, and I'm going to make sure all these wires are about the same length. So I'm just going to cut a little off. These are now all the same length. And just to save some time, I'm going to strip these wires and pre-tin them, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so <clears throat> I pre-tinned this, and I want this to look nice as nice as possible so this is what I'm going to do I'm just gonna get some this I don't believe this comes in a kit but I have a bunch of zip ties here and I'm going to zip tie these just so it looks nice and pretty I actually have thousands and thousands of these zip ties um, an electronics company went out of business and a buddy of mine told me about it and so I was digging in the dumpster and I got all kinds of 
electronic stuff out of their dumpster, so whatever. I don't care. Here, I'll fast forward. I'll do the zip ties. Okay, as you can see, I zip tied this, uh, these, these wires right here, and I zip tied these wires right here going to the high voltage. And uh, it looks nice and clean instead of a rat's nest, okay? So, <clears throat> now if you, were, if you wanted to do, to do this properly, you could choose to make a connector that goes right here with the parts that come in Fred's kit. I'm going to do it my way, okay? Um, now, as you can see, we have red, green, blue, heater, ground. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over upside down. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to add a little extra solder. Red, green, blue, heater, ground. And I'm going to connect my red wire for red, green wire for green, blue wire for blue, orange wire was my heater, and black wire was my ground. Okay, so now that that's connected, it doesn't look so bad, does it? <laughs> okay, so that's now connected. We need to make, we need to have this power go to the deflection board. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, if you notice, this high voltage board has B plus heater positive 24 volts and ground and they're labeled right here on the silk screen okay well these exact same labels are right here B plus heater plus 24 and ground and remember I mentioned before that it has this there's an upgrade on this if you ever so just decided to run an Amplophone high voltage board now you can with this kit uh, in an easier way because it has the negative 24 uh, volt pin right here you can actually solder to. Okay so <clears throat> what I could do is I can make a plug that goes from here to here and if you decide to do that that's great and you know good for you but once again I'm going the lazy man's route. <laughs> so I figure when I put this together it's going to be pretty close together anyways. I'm probably going to do it literally something like that. So I'm going to make, I'm just going to jump these same pins to these very same pins and uh, I'll catch up with you in a few minutes here. Okay, I just have the board flipped over and I'm just going to solder onto these. I don't care what, what they are yet, I'm just going to connect the wire to each one. Again, this is the uh, voltage going to and the heater voltage coming from the high voltage board. Okay. You can hang that soldering iron up. Just use all the same color wire, I don't care. So the first one we have is ground. That would be this. Then heater. Okay, so let's do ground. Actually, let me ref let me flow a little extra solder on these. Okay. So the first one I'm going to grab is ground. Right here is my ground. If I get it to stay still.
ground. Next one I have is plus 24. And there it is. The very next one down. Then grab these in a way so it stays straight. <laughs> I'm having way too much trouble with this. Plus 24. Next one is heater. Just want to re verify. Heater, yes. Looks like they are in, or in the same order on both plugs. I'm just extra cautious. And the last, last wire is the last connection. Good enough. <clears throat> so, now I have plenty of room to position this. Also, what I'm going to use and what I suggest, what I think it'd be easiest, is you see this monitor frame that I'm using? First off, this is a uh, 19VK, uh, 19V, what was it? 1972. Uh, chassis, and <clears throat> I'm going to rewind this yoke so so for use with vectors. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of wood, and I'm going to lay that piece of wood right over this steel, okay? And I'm going to screw from the bottom up into the wood with wood screws through the existing holes. There's four holes, nicely spaced, and I'm going to put the piece of wood there, screw it on. So now I have a big piece of wood that can easily be screwed into so I can add these components wherever I want, wherever it just feels right. That way I don't have to worry about a drill or anything like that. That's just how I like it. You know, it's up to you. Now, uh, once again, I'm going to be using more of these zip ties. Thousands of zip ties. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Now I'm going to connect this connector here. Like I said before, this allows you to plug the monitor itself into an Atari harness, okay? Now this is already pre-pinned. Um, I don't know if Fred's kits, you'll have to pin this yourself, or if it comes pre-pinned, I don't know. But okay, so, remember this? You barely see it in the camera. There we go. Remember this? I'm going to I'm going to wire it up. First we're going to do the power. AC center tap AC. So I'm going to grab these guys right here. Now let's go with center tap first. What I'm going to do is this is going to connect directly into this plug going to connect directly to this plug right here if you decide to make that plug but what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder directly to the bottom so let me add a little solder here I'm just going to connect these two center pins with a big blob I don't care I ain't hurt nothing okay and I'm going to add a little solder here and a little solder here. This is my center tap. Now that's connected. Okay. Now let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, so center tap is now connected. And now we have the two that I labeled AC on each side okay they don't matter doesn't matter which side it goes doesn't matter so what I'm gonna do is solder one over here and one over here okay so now we have power going into the monitor and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to zip tie these. 
Okay, if you if you really want it to, you could just put them all together. But I personally like to have the the voltage separated from your video wires. So let me do some zip tie-in, and the reason why is because you don't want. I, I want every every possibility, every chance of having less noise from these power lines affecting your X, y, X and Y and your colors, of course. I mean, it's not going to do much, but it's going to it's going to do a little bit to isolate this from these. So let me uh, zip tie these together, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now. Remember this piece of paper right here? This is what we're going to connect now. The first thing I'm going to worry about is ground. Now this is the ground that uh, you could use, but I'm going to go a different route because I'm not going to use this connector. Instead of using this connector, like you probably should, I'm going to wa uh, solder it directly to the board. So. First things first, let's go back to this piece of paper. Now you can see we have ground, ground, ground. Ugh, this battery is dying already. The camera battery is dying. Oh jeez, it was fully charged when I started this video. Okay, so what I did is I connected all three of those grounds together. And what I'm going to do is solder it right here. Where, it, where the center tap was, that's also ground. Okay, so that's how I'm cheating. That's how I'm doing that. Let me charge this damn camera. While that's charging, I'm going to zip tie this grease ground wires. Okay, I left the camera plugged in to charge. I watched an episode of Family Guy. So now I have a couple more bars on the battery. So let's see if it lasts the rest of this video. This battery sucks. This camera sucks. But okay, so let's go back to this connector again. I want to find red, green, and blue. Okay. So right here's my red. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And yes, you could get the the VGA connector that, that is included in the kit and use it, but I just don't uh, I just don't care. I don't I don't need it. It's not a big deal for me. Okay, so I'm going to solder this right here. Okay, this far edge right there. There's my red. The next one is green. Oop, I just bridged my red and green. There we go. Let's do this over again. Okay, red. Green. And my last one is blue. I'm going to connect that right there. And of course I just bridged that. There we go. Let's do it again. There we go. Red, green, and blue are connected right here. Okay, so this connector now only has two wires left. One is X and one is Y. And uh, honestly, I don't know which is which. I guess you'd have to look it up. But I don't care, and I'll tell you why. It doesn't matter for me because I'm going to custom wind that yoke. You know, X could be Y, Y could be X. I don't care. You know, and and uh, I'll show you what I'll, I'll show you why it doesn't matter in a minute here, especially if you're winding your own yoke. Okay, so let me add a little solder to these spots because this looks a little thinner than I want it to be. A little solder there, a little solder there. I'm going to connect. This is either X or Y. I don't know. Right there and X or Y right there okay so now everything's connected uh, I'm gonna zip tie this 
like I said, I would like to, I like to keep the power separated from the colors in the X Y. Okay. Now, originally, let me, let me find. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me find. Here we go. Originally, this is a uh, extension uh, uh, piece for the harness of a gravitar. Now, originally, they twisted the ground with. You see these twisted, these twisted wires. They're called twisted pairs. They twisted a ground wire around each color wire, and and, e, and each X and and the Y wires. And the reason they did that was to help remove any noise. Okay, I myself am not too terribly worried about noise and a one foot long, a foot and a half long cable. I, I'm okay with it. <clears throat> but if you do happen to have any noise on your monitor, you might think about using a VGA cable which is which is even which is which is even better than a twisted pair or twist a ground wire around each color red green and blue and twist a ground wire around your Y and uh, X not really necessary in my opinion I'm not gonna worry about it but uh, okay so this is what let me zoom in this is what a I can't zoom in. Anyways, this is what your finished ordeal would look like if you went my route. Of course, like I said, if you want, you can always make the actual connectors. Okay, <clears throat> so let me go over a few things. This is about what it's going to look like. I still have one more thing to wire in, and that is my uh, positor circuit. But let me go over something for you. Let's say I uh, want to put this in an, in an Atari monitor. Well, as you can see, the yoke coil connection is the same for, this is the same, same connector for Wells Gardner 6100 and the Amplifone, okay? But as you can see, there's pin, no pin, 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 pin. You see that? And Fred's kit is right here. There's four pins in a row. No, no space, no gap in the center. What you're going to want to do is, <clears throat> let me find a connector so I can give you an example. Okay. What you're going to want to do is, remember how I was talking about these pins here and how they have that little raised section right here? that clicks into this groove right here well what you're going to want to do is there's a gap okay you want to push that pin in push in right here and and push that little slot in and then then the wire will will easily fall out and you want to move that wire where there's the gap and move it over this way so it move it over one and then it'll plug directly into Fred's kit no issue and it, and it doesn't harm the monitor in, in any, any way. You can always put it back. Um, <clears throat> now, remember how I said I don't care about what X and what Y is? Well, the reason I don't care is... Let me zoom into this. I try to. This pin and this pin is X or Y. This pin and this pin is X or Y. If I felt like it, I could remove those pins just like I showed you. Let's say I ha my picture is a mirrored image. Well, that would, mean, that would mean that all I have to do is swap this wire and this wire. Or swap this wire and this wire. Or let's say it's, it's um, upside down. The whole image is upside down. Well, then I would have to switch this wire and this wire and this wire and this wire. So, long story short, even if you have your inputs wired incorrectly, you can still mess with the outputs to make your a proper picture. Okay, so now what? Let's wire this guy up. <clears throat> Let me zoom out. Now on your tube, you're going to have a, de a degauss coil. And every tube is going to have one. And there's two different 
two different possible ways you can wire this in and it depends on two different things okay <clears throat> now you're, there's going to be a coil that goes around your tube and it's going to have two wires okay just like this one right here every monitor every t every tv set whatever is going to be going to have the same exact plug or something similar well anyways um this originally uh was 120 volts how do i know because it came out of a it's an arcade monitor tube and they always used 120 volts and they use a circuit very similar to this nearly identical to this on every tv set monitor whatever and the way this works is it energizes that coil and then the, and then the coil slowly loses some energy until it completely shuts the coil off Now this happens when the monitor is first turned on um, and, the, and the way it works is this this uh, positor uh, acts like a dead short until it heats up internally and when it heats up it slowly it slowly it's kind of like a dimmer switch it slowly takes away some current until no current is present at all okay now since this is 120 volts originally this yoke coil I'm going to hook this up to 120 volts but I here's something you could try it may not always work but here's something you can try you could hook this up to the 60 volts on the monitor um, and, and, and I'll get to that in a minute but let's say you have an original Wells Gardner 6100 or you have a, an original Amphiphone monitor and you don't really want to go tap extra wires in here's something you can do you can use this same circuit and wire it in to uh, hold on, let me flip this over and wire it right here this far pin and this far pin that will give you 60 volts um, about 60 volts ish and that will run the original coil at 60 volts now you can run an original Wells Gardner 6100 or Amphiphone at 120 volts if you really want to so either way it doesn't matter but you can use this circuit with the original yoke coil or with the, or with the, with the original deflection voltages or you can use this circuit with 120 volts doesn't really matter <clears throat> but okay so I guess it's pretty much all done I mean as well I, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to bed it's about 3 in the morning um, and I gotta go to work tomorrow so I guess I'm gonna cut this off and tomorrow I'm gonna to rewind the yoke I'm not gonna bother showing you showing you how to rewind the yoke because I already did on this channel uh, in my channel there's a video that um, that, t that talks about how to rewind yokes for use with vector monitors so if you want if you if you don't know how to wind a yoke watch that by the way I'm no longer going to wind any yokes I, I already wound, I have wound 150 yokes already and that is several miles of wire and uh, it, it may not sound that that hard but and it really, it really isn't that hard but my hands cramp up when I wind it and I really don't want to wind any more yokes um, you, you although you might be able to um, <clears throat> convince me with parts instead of cash <laughs> I might still wind some if you got some parts that I might be interested in um, but okay, yep, so I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Oh, well, I wanted to mention this. Des Baz on the Clove, or on Facebook, his name is Derek Barnes. Um, he is going to start winding yokes. So, you know, if you want a yoke wound and you don't feel confident winding your own yoke, talk to Des Baz. Uh, or, like I said, watch the video. It's not that hard. You can do it yourself. But, okay. Catch you tomorrow. Okay, this is the next day, and um, I wound this yoke, and I did make a connector here for the yoke. Now you see how I have two yellow wires on one side, two red wires on one on the other side? That just uh, denotes one coil in yellow and the other coil in red. So, now I'm basically just going to hook it all up. You know, I was, I was debating on, uh, I was thinking about putting a piece of wood here. And then I realized that, hey, the cabinet that I'm going to put this in, it has a wood base on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, this uh, steel plate 
and I'm just going to go ahead and screw this chassis in and use the existing piece of wood to mount it to. So I'm going to I'm going to hook this up in this cabinet. I don't want you to know what cabinet this is yet. So I'm going to when I test this, I'm going to zoom in really close and hopefully you guys won't know what this cabinet is because this cabinet is going to be a whole other video. It's a surprise cabinet. Okay? So let's let's uh I'm just going to move all this guts into the other cabinet and uh screw it down. And let's test it for the first time. See what happens. Okay. So, I have it now mounted into the cabinet, into the mystery cabinet. Um, you, you really didn't miss much. I mean, all I did was basically get the, the same setup I had and screw it onto this back part here. Now, don't forget to ground your DAG strap to the back of the tube. I grounded it here. I know earlier I said to also ground, ground these, these one of these terminals on the deflection board. But this shares the same ground as this, so grounding it to here also grounds it to there, so it doesn't matter. And uh, take notice here that I have the DAG strap, or the DAG strap, degauss coil connected to this uh, positor board. Okay, and this is designed to to hook up to 120 volts, but in my case, I just went ahead and hooked it up to 60 volts. Now. If your monitor does not degauss properly, then you're going to need to, hook it to connect it to 120 volts. I'm taking a chance at running it at half the power, but uh, I have a feeling we'll be okay. Okay, so that's about it. Here is my, uh, you know, uh, plug, my, Mol my Molex plug, and uh, I have a cabinet next to this, which is a, a space stool cabinet with Lunar Battle inside, and I'm going to reach this over and get an extension and we're going to plug this in side by side let's turn it on for the first time let's see what the hell happens okay I plugged it in and uh, I had a dot in the center of the screen and the beam just went straight down and uh, so I, I just went over I double checked my connections and I see that I did this entire VGA connection wrong I did it the, actually the mirror image of what I was supposed to do but this, this shouldn't be a problem for you if you're going to use the connector like you should anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect these wires and solder them in the reverse order. And that'll, that should clear this up and then we'll test it again. Okay, I think I have the wiring right now. So let me go over to the other game here and put this on. And hopefully we won't see any smoke. Okay, looks like it's working. Convergence is clearly off, and it's sideways. Okay, so that's good. Now, at this point, I could choose to rotate the yoke. Um, and <clears throat> this is what this is what I'm going to try to do. I want to I want to keep this back in its original convergence, if, if possible. So I'm going to swap X and Y around because I put the yoke back the exact way it, it was. And I'd like to, to keep the convergence rings exactly how they were also. Right now they're kind of just stuffed back on there, but I know where they go. So instead of rotating the entire yoke, I'm going to, uh, I'll show you in a minute, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, what I'm going to do is note that the one connector that I actually kept pinned was for the yoke. I did that for a reason. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap X and Y. Now, if you notice, like I said before, I color-coded X and Y. I'm going to get these red wires and put them over on the yellow side, and get these yellow wires and put them on the red side. Now, if you don't have the right tool, like I don't, scratch all would work, uh, you can use a wood screw. And you want to stick it right here, to push in that little tab, if I could do it in front of the camera. Hold on, let me get my wire ready to pull. See how it popped out? I'm going to pull that one out. Okay. Let me get this wire ready to pull. See how that popped out? Get this wire. 
popped out. Popped out. So I'm going to move the red over here. I may have a mirror image. If so, I'll show you what to do. Okay, so let me plug that in. And let me go to the front of the screen. Okay, that looks like it did it. But obviously the picture is squished this way and needs to shrink down this way. And let me show you where... So I need to adjust the um, X and Y adjustments. So um, I'm going to show you where to do it. Okay, I'm back behind the machine. And in a minute here I'm going to have Kelly come in and watch the screen and tell me what she thinks as I adjust this. But, <clears throat> let me zoom in. Let me move the camera here. And let me explain. It's pretty self-explanatory, but in case you don't know, there's this potentiometer right here for uh, your size. So this is your Y size, this is your X size. By the way, when you first test this machine, you should turn these all the way to the left. Now that's going to give you basically a spot, and it's kind of screen, or you know, and the spot killer is going to kick in. But um, <clears throat> you know, you don't want to turn it all the way up. You don't want to turn it all the way to the right, because you could possibly blow a fuse in the process of you trying your new yoke and so on. So I suggest when you first turn it on, slowly turn these up, each of them, until a picture shows on the screen. But uh, right now I see I have a flashing spot killer, so right now the picture's too small one way. So I'm going to have Kelly adjust the... Uh, Kelly tell me what the screen looks like when I adjust it. But I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, so I had Kelly um, uh, watch the screen as I adjusted it. Now we're clearly still out of convergence, but we have an issue. We have a couple issues. But I'm only going to talk about one so far. Now, you see how Lunar Battle isn't being spelled out just right? That's because the spot killer circuit is a little too sensitive for the setup here. So, <clears throat> I sent a text to Fred Konoposka, and uh, it's like 3 in the morning right now, so he hasn't gotten back to me. Because this, this is what I plan on doing. I want, you see, I can figure this out myself, but I want, if I'm going to tell you how, how to modify your spot killer circuit, I'd like to do it how Fred suggests it. But uh, I'm impatient. I'm going to go ahead and figure out how, how to modify this spot killer circuit. Now, this, so in other words, this spot killer circuit is a little too sensitive. Now, the sensitivity of the spot killer circuit is set to, to do most things. In other words, um, this game board, and, you know, th th there's different games that have different uh, deflection, you know what I mean? Uh, there's different yokes that require different voltage, that's why it's adjustable. Uh, or different current, I should say. Um, so there is no one size fits all for this specific kit because it can be used in many different ways. But in my setup, spot see how that's disappearing. In my setup, the spot killer circuit is too damn sensitive. So I'm gonna uh, find some schematics and uh, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to modify this spot killer circuit to fix this drawing. Also, um, earlier you may have noticed that that red light was on, on the uh, on the board. That is when that when that red light is on, that means spot killer is active. Which means, by the way, let me explain spot killer. What spot killer does is, um, if if no deflection or not enough deflection is present on the screen, okay, what that circuit does to protect the screen, uh, is, is to protect the screen from burn. What it'll do is it'll shut off the beam. It'll shut down Z intensity. And uh, it's a little too sensitive here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, figure out how to modify this. And I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, let me tell you what I did to fix my little spot killer issue. Keep in mind, not all monitors are going to have this issue. And it really depends on your yoke and so on. But uh, <clears throat> what I did is, let me try to zoom in. is I put a uh, 500 ohm resistor across this and across this. And that's all I did and now I have excellent picture. So 
So let me show you the screen. Okay, so now I have it in test mode, and um, it's really hard to tell on camera, at least at least, at least when I'm looking at the screen here. But um, the high voltage, the B plus, has a little bit of a of a noise in it, a little bit of a flicker. Yes, vectors are supposed to have flicker. This kind of has a little bit of an additional flicker. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add those capacitors that I talked about in the beginning of the video to the high voltage circuit and see if that smooths it up. Okay, as you can see, we now have a perfect, perfect picture with zero, zero noise. And uh, I did something, and I want to show you guys what to do. I'm going to have a talk with Fred. I, I think that he should include this with this kit. If not, I suggest you do this uh, yourself at home. But, uh, you, you know, I, I had to let my battery charge again on this camera. And uh, I was looking through, through yeah, I was looking at different YouTube channels and uh, a huge hobby of mine years ago used to be building Tesla coils. And I ran across this kid. He has this, this, this kid has a YouTube channel called Electrotechnics, I think it's called, and uh, wow, it, it just reminds it reminds me of me. This I don't know how old this kid this guy is, but he has a young voice, and uh, you can tell he understands the formulas, and he's talking about inductive reactants and things like that, and uh, boy, that oh, that made me smile. I actually got, a, I know it sounds stupid, but I got a little emotional because it reminded me of me, and I really appreciated, and I, I, I really enjoyed how he knew what he was talking about, but he, he dumped it down as much as possible so it can be, um, you know, put on YouTube and have people understand. It, it's just a great video. It's a great channel. Check it out. Electrotechnics. Uh, I'll put something down here, maybe. But, um... Yeah, somehow I cut myself. I don't know where. I got blood in my hand. Anyways, uh, so let me show you the back, and I'll show you what I did. So we had some noise in the high voltage. And so I tried the same tricks that I did um, with uh, Fred's last high voltage, and it didn't work. Uh, not this time. So what I did was, and this isn't going to help you on revision 3, but uh, what I did was I added the 1000 microfarad cap on the output of the first DC to DC converter and I uh, added a, uh, tw a 22 microfarad cap on the B plus, B plus to ground. And it did jack shit. It didn't do anything. And uh, so um, I decided to add a capacitor right here. Now this is connecting G2 to ground and it's an easy to find cap it's no big deal I went with a uh, with the, these caps right here this is these are rated at uh, 20 kV and the number is 102 so you can get these these for I mean you know pennies these are like 50 cents a piece maybe um, this is it buddy this is the magic trick to get this monitor to be absolutely perfect and you know what we have an excellent excellent picture and honest to God, I give Fred's deflection board an 11 out of 10. And as long as you do this, this capacitor, add this capacitor right here, I give that high voltage an 11 out of 10. Excellent, excellent, excellent monitor. Great job, Fred. Um, oh, um, let, me, let, let me say this. <clears throat> My boss actually has been wanting me to mention this. There's a show coming up. It's called Pinball Expo. It's the uh, longest running pinball show ever. And uh, anyways, come check it out. Uh, I'm going to put a graphic up right now. And anyways, at this show, I'm actually going to do a seminar where I'm going to talk about uh, arcade repair. So um, yeah, check that out. Have a good one, guys. Please subscribe. Uh, hit that bell icon. Maybe, you know, so, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, next time I put a video out, it'll pop up and you'll know when to click on it. Alright, have a good one.